Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am excited to be back. It's been a little bit since I've been in my craft room and I am excited to be back and create a video for you today. So we are continuing our Mother's Day uh, card and matching stationery set uh, today. So what I have here, uh, this is actually the set for my sister. <clears throat> she, so what I've done here is I've taken just a regular sheet of a uh, letter size cardstock. I've cut it in half. Uh, so I have a piece that is eight and a half by five and a half. And I already stamped my little logo on the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. This is the Simon Says Stamp. Let me find it. Thankful Magnolia. Uh, it is a large beautiful magnolia image and I am just placing my paper in here in the middle um, and I'm trying to make sure that when this folds that this folds and the image is not upside down because <laughs> I would totally do that so there is that beautiful magnolia image and I'm going to stamp this just in the center of these a2 size panels um, in a very light colored ink. I chose to go with a gray, but you could do a, a light color of any color you desire or any light color that matches what you're, what you're trying to go for. So I'm going to take this stamp out and I'm actually using, uh, Tim Holtz's new ink, his, uh, distress oxide and lost shadow. And I'm going to use that to stamp this image out. This is a big, big image and I liked it because I am not very good at coloring with alcohol markers and I wanted to continue this onto the you know front of her actual like Mother's Day card and this gave me enough real estate to practice <clears throat> excuse me to practice blending uh, without making me feel overwhelmed <laughs> with a, a large image um, so I eventually go back and stamp this in an, in a alcohol friendly ink, alcohol marker friendly ink. But for now I'm just using this lost shadow. I do have to stamp this a few times. Uh, the very first time, because it is a brand new stamp and I've never used it before. I do have to stamp it a few times just to, uh, kind of condition it and, and get a good impression the first time. As I continue stamping, I have 30 sheets here. So this is like a 30 set of stationery. It does stamp a lot better. The only time I had to restamp is if I actually missed a spot inking. Um, and that's just my fault, not the fault of the stamp. So uh, here I'm just stamping this twice. Normally when I make this kind of stationery, I have already scored this in the middle uh, just to make the folding of it easier, but I knew I was going to stamp this large image in the middle. And so I knew I needed to not do that. Otherwise it would stamp correctly. Uh, there'd already be a crease there and it'd just be weird. So I was very conscious of the fact that of the order in which I did things today. So I'm just going to go through and repeat this on all 30 sheets, stamping this large thankful magnolia image from Simon in the Lost Shadow ink from Tim Holtz. And I'm using the Distress Oxide today. Uh, the Distress ink is not super good for stamping, but you can use whatever kind of ink you like. Sorry, you can hear my dog. He is like, I'm outside and he has found something that he needs to bark at. So sorry about that. Um, I did end up putting another sheet of like cardstock behind this. Um, I felt like I had this one spot that I just couldn't get a good impression on. I think I had a bubble, like because this is so big, I think I had a bubble underneath it. Uh, and so I just ended up putting another piece of cardstock behind it. And that helped me um, get a better impression. So now all of these card fronts or all of these uh, stationary panels are stamped. And I'm going to, on the long side, score this at four and a quarter. 
so that when these are folded, they are four and a quarter by five and a half. They're an A2 size card. Uh, and I'm just gonna go through and use my little scoreboard and my uh, little scoring tool and score all 30 of these at four and a quarter. Uh, <clears throat> and then I now have all of that done. So I wanted to keep this set simple. I figured that my sister would like that better than something kind of busier, I guess. Um, and I had this beautiful set of pattern paper from Paper Studio. This is the Brushy Floral. Um, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I believe this one is still available. I think I was at Hobby Lobby. This is the beginning of April when I'm filming this. And I went there like a couple days ago. And this particular set of pattern paper was still available. So I am... I took a layering die set. I believe this is the Hero Arts layering die set. I took this from my stash and I just picked a few sets of, a few um, patterns of this paper that I liked. And I just die cut that using um, a, a square die that I felt gave me a nice border but let still let the paper shine. Um, and then I'm just going to go through and glue all of these flat. Um, with this particular size, I was able to get six from each of the pattern papers that I chose. Um, and so I have five different patterns here. And I'm just going through and like I said, gluing them to the front. So the stamping is the inside of the card. And another reason why I chose that light ink is because it's easy to write over. Uh, if you chose a darker ink, they might have to have a different kind of pen or something like that, and I didn't want them to have to worry about that. I'm gonna include like a nice um, ink pen with this. And so I didn't want to have to get creative with the particular pen that they used. So here, the set is all done. I have the stamping on the inside that they can write over, and then I have this uh, beautiful pattern paper that I wanted to let shine on the front. These envelopes are also from Paper Studio, and I used the Hampton Art SC1013 to stamp those flaps. Um, and I just used some Gina K Amalgam ink to stamp that. And I stamped the banner first, and then I went through and stamped the handmade, um, handmade and heartfelt, I believe is what that says. So now we are moving on to the actual Mother's Day card for my sister. And I kept that uh, large magnolia in my stamping tool. And I just took another sheet of, uh, half sheet of cardstock. And I'm going to stamp this, I think I stamped it three, maybe four times in this Gina K Amalgam ink. This Amalgam ink is wonderful. It can be used for watercoloring, alcohol markers, uh, colored pencils. It can be used for several different kinds of mediums and it's very difficult to find one that stamps uh, really black like that um, that can be used for several different kinds of mediums that are very very different from one another. So uh, like I said I just use my little stamping tool and my Tim Holtz platform to stamp that out three or four times and then I'm going to let that dry um, and move on to another thing. I have discovered that because I've stamped this several times, it does take a minute for it to dry. And so I'm going to go ahead and get this stamped and then let it dry. So I'm moving on to the background of her card and I just have a scrap piece of Paper Studio Black cardstock and I am going to do some heat embossing. So what I have done is I have treated my black cardstock with a anti-static powder tool and just kind of spread that around. And I am using the Simon Says Stamp Chevron Pattern uh, Red Rubber Cling Stamp to stamp just a geometric, uh, fairly simple background on here. And I'm going to be using some Ranger Gold Embossing Powder. And I have inked that stamp up in Versamark ink. And I'm going to stamp this, I believe I stamp it twice. And then I'm going to end up flipping the cardstock over and stamping it twice again. Um, 
just so that I can get a full panel because I'm going to make this into a slimline card because this image is so large it really lends itself to you know being the main image on any kind of sized card um, I chose to do something a little different and make it into a slimline so this uh, piece of black cardstock just a scrap is is a perfect size to make this into a slimline uh, and this gives you another way to use maybe a stamp that isn't uh, made for the particular size of card you're using this gives you another way to use it um, and kind of stretch your supplies which is always nice to do so I've inked this up I've stamped it a couple times and now I'm going to sprinkle on this gold embossing powder from Ranger. Uh, this is one of my favorite um, gold embossing powders. I have, I think it's like an antique gold and I have a platinum and then I have their white, or no, I, excuse me, I have their clear, I think. Um, but anyway, just a really good quality. My fan was on and I discovered that I was getting embossing powder everywhere absolutely everywhere and of course I wasn't smart and took this take this off of that little sticky mat I have there so now I'm gonna have a mess on my st on my sticky mat but that's okay um, it wipes off so anyway I stamped that it stamped beautifully there were some spots around the edge that had some embossing powder where I didn't want them but I wasn't too concerned about that because I did know that I was going to end up uh, trimming this out so now clearly this is not long enough to do a slim line so I do end up flipping this cardstock around doing the same thing again just treating it with that anti-static powder tool rubbing that around um, and I just bumped it up two squares on on my little sticky mat here uh, and just try to keep the paper in the same orientation for the most part uh, and this worked out okay you will see that I end up having a seam. Um, I wasn't too concerned about that, again, because this image is so large, it was easy to kind of cover it, and nobody knows that that seam is there except me and all of YouTube. So, you know, that's fine. <laughs> so I'm gonna sprinkle on that gold embossing powder, and as you can see, there is that seam that I was talking about, but again, I'm not too worried about that because I can hide that with my focal image. I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that, and we will move on. We're gonna move on to the sentiment. So I have another piece of that same Paper Studio Black cardstock. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment in gold embossing powder, the same one. I'm gonna do everything the same. This sentiment comes from the Simon Says Stamp All About Mom, and thankfully it comes with coordinating dies to die cut out all of these sentiments, which is something that I really love because I am not a huge fan of fussy cutting, which is something that I end up doing in this video but if I can avoid it, I do. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that out in the Versamark, sprinkle on my gold embossing powder, heat set it, and I'm going to die cut that out with its coordinating die. We're gonna move on to making the card base. I do have a Paper Studio um, slimline envelope there. It's just white, uh, but I'm gonna make the card base. So all I did was take my paper trimmer and I cut this piece of paper to eight and a half by seven. And then I'm going to, on the seven inch side, score it at three and a half, and that will make me a three and a half by eight and a half slimline card base. Uh, this is just some, I believe this is actually Hammer Mill uh, 100 pound cardstock, and this is going to give me my card base. I'm just using a EK Tools uh, scoreboard. I've had this for a very long time, um, works wonderfully. So our card base is all done. And now I'm going to take my same trimmer and cut out a, I guess, mat for this card base. I'm going to cut this paper down to uh, three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Um, I wanted a mat, but I didn't want a huge mat, so uh, three and a quarter by eight and a quarter was perfect. And I'm just going to trim this out and glue it down flat to the card base. When I trimmed this out, I had a strip of cardstock. I don't even know how big it was, but it was big enough that I didn't want to throw it away. So I ended up actually gluing it to the inside of this card. As you can see here, I just used some wet glue and glued that to the inside of the card, just so that the inside of the card has some interest also. 
All right, so now we are going to move on. This is where I die cut out the sentiment. Uh, there is that Simon Says Stamp All About Mom stamp and die set, and I'm just going to take my Sizzix Sidekick and cut that heat embossed sentiment out once. Um, and then I'm going to actually take the rest of that cardstock and cut it out an additional three times. Uh, I take that back. I think I cut it out an additional four times. And then I'm going to stack that together for dimension. It's at this point that you could have used some foam tape, but I decided not to. I just decided to kind of kill off that scrap piece of cardstock and uh, cut that out. So I have a handful of artist markers from Altenew here, and I'm going to do some coloring. Like I said, this image was a good size for me to practice coloring, to practice ink blending, uh, but didn't make me feel super overwhelmed with detail. Sorry, you can hear my dog. Like, they are the loudest drinkers ever. He's a big pit bull, and he is the loudest drinker on the planet, so sorry. Anyway, um, the artist markers I'm using today are Ruby Red, Hunter Green, Coral Berry, Just Green, Jet Black, Frosty Pink, Sweet Leaf, and Rubelite. Uh, I just wanted to kind of mimic some of the colors that were in the pattern paper. Um, and at this point, this, this amalgam ink from Gina K is dry. However, um, I do end up saturating the paper too much. <laughs> and it does start to smear a little bit that is my fault that is the mistake of someone that is inexperienced in um, still learning at alcohol marker coloring so if you ever start doing something and you know you discover that oh it's it's bleeding it's just not turning out like you wanted um, as long as you learn from that that is a win um, and I learned that I put too much ink down <laughs> and so too much marker down and uh, it, it started to bleed. Um, I have really, really sped this up. This took me probably 40 minutes to color because, like I said, I'm not fast. I'm not proficient at this. Um, I, I chose the artist markers just because they come in sets that are designed to blend together. And so I like that about them. It takes the guesswork out of it for me. And I can appreciate that immensely. Uh, I found that when I had to kind of come up with color combinations myself, I just didn't do it. Like it just intimidated me and I didn't do it. So uh, using these Alt new artist markers has really helped me to at least try it. Am I good at it yet? No. Uh, if you want to watch someone that is a amazing alcohol or uh, alcohol marker color, go to Kelly Taylor. She is amazing. I mean, color stuff that you just feel like you should be able to reach out and touch. Like they look so real and so dimensional. I am not that. <laughs> um, maybe someday, but I think for now I'm going to stick with my stencils because that's a safety blanket. That's my happy place. But every now and then it is good to try something a little different and outside my comfort zone and, and try to, you know, improve myself and my, my skills. So I have sped this up four times. I do not color this fast. Um, and like I said, um, I, I just wanted to color this image um, in a way that made, kind of mimic some of the colors on the pattern paper I used. This is a bit brighter, um, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna finish coloring this and then I am going to end up fussy cutting this out. Uh, as I colored this, I kind of didn't like how some things are blending. Some things just looked very like stark, like there was a huge difference between stuff, uh, between colors. You can always do what's called a tip to tip method where you take your, um, your, your lighter marker to a darker marker and you can create like a second color. Um, I didn't do that in this video. I ended up just oversaturating my paper. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> um, but that is a technique that you can do. All I tried to do with the coloring was add the darkest color. I have a four color blend for the flower and a three color blend for the leaves. And all I tried to do is put the darkest color of the red 
near where the illustrator put like lines and veins um, and then just kind of blend out from there you want to see the most of your mid-tones and here I felt like I lost my shadow and so I came back in and tried to add that in a little bit more and it was at this point particularly around kind of that center portion of the flower that I felt like I was really losing um, or excuse me that it was starting to bleed everywhere uh, again that's just inexperience that's not knowing <laughs> when to stop and uh, that's no fault of the medium that's just a learning curve so I'm almost done with the flowers I think I do go back in and add just a little bit more color to some of the greenery I felt like I lost maybe a little bit of the greenery um, and as I was coloring I found spots that I missed or uh, wanted to touch up a little bit and so I did go back and hit those up as well I don't know if this stamp set has a coordinating die, but if it does, I do not have it. So I did fussy cutting, which I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm not a huge fan of, but because it's Mother's Day and it's for my sister, again, we'll, we'll make exceptions. <laughs> so anyway, uh, when you fussy cut, this is real time. I am a very slow fussy cutter. When you fussy cut, you want to keep your scissors stationary and you want to move and, and your scissors in your dominant hand and you want to move the paper with your non-dominant hand. Um, this will get you a much smoother, cleaner cut and will make it look a little bit more professional. As I cut, I get little sections that you'll see me kind of snip sections of the cardstock off. Sorry, I kind of getting out of camera here. Uh, you'll see me just kind of whack sections off. I do that through the whole thing. Now, you see that I have this white outline. I knew that I was going to go back with a black marker and color in uh, those white sections. So I tried to get as close on the outside as possible, remembering that I was going to go back in with a black marker and color in uh, kind of those innards that were would have been really difficult to get to with uh, scissors and or a craft knife. So I have an Altenew, um jet black marker and I'm just going to go through and all of those white areas, I'm going to color those in black. Uh, this will help it look more cohesive with my card design and not be so bold and dramatic um, and, and stark, I guess. Uh, on my background. So I'm just going to take this artist marker and color in all of those uh, sections. And then I do go back and I just take the, um, that was using the bullet nib. I now I'm going to take the brush uh, section, brush nib, and I am going to go around the edges. Typically you would not use an alcohol marker to do this. You would use like a memento marker that's a water-based marker. Um, but I wasn't too worried about um, this, this marker bleeding. And so I'm just going along and covering kind of those white uh, sections so that it gives my uh, fussy cut image a more clean and professional and seamless look. Uh, like I am a better fussy cutter than I actually am. <laughs> Once that is done, I am going to just adhere this straight down to my panel here. Um, and I had glue that gooped absolutely everywhere, so I had to kind of clean that up. But I'm going to adhere this down flat. Um, you could pop this up on foam tape. I opted not to, um, but that would be beautiful. Uh, and like I said, if this had a coordinating die, you could just cut it out multiple times using the coordinating die. I am going to set my little mini Misty on there to let that dry, make sure I get good adhesion. Then I'm going to flip it around to the back and I'm going to take a long pair of shears and just trim off that excess. You could um, just put this in a bigger envelope and leave that excess hanging off the card. That would be pretty. Um, you could take those bits and pieces if you had bigger pieces and you could attach those in various sections. Uh, on the front of the card or even attach them to the inside of the card. I didn't really have a whole lot of um, 
I would say usable excess. So I just ended up tossing those pieces in the trash. I am going to adhere that sentiment down flat and using my liquid glue. And remember we stacked this up. I think it's a total of four or five high. I think it's five. Um, and it just gives it a really good like chipboard esque feel to it. Um, and all it is is stacked die cuts using that sentiment. So that's always super nice. I adhered that sentiment down flat. And then as a finish, final uh, embellishment, final finishing touch, I did use some pearls. These are reddish pearls uh, from my stash. These were purchased off of Etsy from Blingy Thingy. And then that finishes the card. So this, thank you so much for spending time with me. I know this was a longer video. Um, I hope that you feel inspired and I hope that you take time to realize that making a custom stationary set doesn't have to be complicated or involved. It can be very simple and equally as beautiful and heartfelt. So that is it for me today and I hope you were inspired and we will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.